Hey, hey, hey! So we are back with another book review today. Um, this book actually took me a little bit longer than the first one due to um, working with trying to get video videos. Um, but anyway, I finished this book last night, so I wanted to go ahead and do a review. So this today we're going to be talking about the Redhead Revealed by Alice Clayton. So this is book two in her Redhead series. So let me read you that synopsis, the summary. Life is sweet. Grace Sheridan has just won her dream role in a new off-Broadway play and the talented hunk flooding her phone with scintillating texts and scandalous photos is Jack Hamilton. The 24-year-old it, Brit, whose Hollywood career is about to climax faster than, you know, so what if their steamy relationship is bi-coastal and under wraps, or that LA fangirls are grabbing Jack's ass? Absence does make the heart grow fonder and the libido hotter, but their few weekend visits feel more like fast food than the five-course dinner they crave. And then, the creator of Grace's new show is the man who broke her heart back in college, and he seems to have written the play just to make amends with his leading lady. As rumors spread that Jack and his lovely, leggy ex-girlfriend have gotten back together, Grace starts to wonder about her own feelings. Can lust alone keep our favorite feisty duo together, or will Grace find herself back in safer, more familiar arms? So this book kind of picks up where the first one left off. So um, at the end of the first one, she had moved to New York and she was doing an off-Broadway off play. Um, it's, it's a major but also minor part. Like, you know, they talk somewhat about the character and about a little bit about what the play is about, but it's not a, a huge plot line, right? It's more the fact that she's in New York rather than what she's doing in New York. Um, so I have to say this book, listen, listen, you need to read this series. Okay. I picked it up because my hair is kind of red and I was like, mm, awesome, whatever. Right. Um, so in this, it, you know, in this book, she's in New York and he's in LA and of course He's also British, so he goes to London. He's from London, so he visits his family there. Um, and it's it's difficult, obviously. I think anybody who's been in a long-distance relationship, I think you can relate to this. Um, obviously, none of you that are probably watching my video have ever been, um, you know, a big movie star. You know, you're probably not of that, that status, right, where you have all the money um, that you can travel back and forth, which I think is, it plays a huge part in long distance relationships. Like if you have the money to travel and visit each other, I feel like it's not as bad, but <coughs> when you don't have the money, yeah, yeah, it just, it really sucks. So, um, but this book starts with her in New York and she's really loving it and having a good time, but she does miss him. Um, his movie is getting ready to premiere. Um, it finally does premiere. She she gets to thinking about her life and what she wants in her life. And she is, they talked about children. He asked her if she wanted children and she was like, I'm pretty sure I don't because I'm 33 and I didn't really ever think about it. She's like, I think that if I, I would think if I wanted kids, I would have thought about it more about it already. Um, and the guy that broke her heart, Michael, I don't know if it says it, but Michael, who is doing the play, um, did break her heart in college. They did sleep together for like one night stand kind of a thing. Um, and then he basically like disappeared. Like they were close friends, they slept together, and then uh, he disappeared, broke her heart. You know, she was in love with him, that kind of thing. Um, so she finds out that he has, is it his little girl or is it his niece? I think it's his little girl. Um, she finds out that he has a daughter and um, <laughs> They, she was hanging out with him one time or whatever. They were doing a meeting and uh, the, the daughter showed up. I think his sister showed up with the girl or something. And um, she got to meet her and, um, you know, it was kind of like a wake-up call for her. And I I think, if you know, as a woman in, in your 30s, I, if, you know, having children is something that you think about. And if you have it, you need to think about it because there's only a limited amount of time that you can have children biologically. Um, and, you know, I would hate for you to, uh, well, it would really suck if you, you know, you hit like menopause and you're like, wow, I, I really wish I would have had kids, you know, I wish I would have thought about it a little bit sooner. Um, it's a hard decision to make and it's something hard to think about because if you're focused on your career or you have other things going on or maybe finances aren't right, it's, it's a hard decision. But, 
Um, I can definitely understand where she's going from, where she's coming from, where she's going. Where she's coming. I can understand, you know, her thinking about children and rethinking it. And, um, her spending time with this little girl has kind of gotten her thinking. And of course, Michael is closer to her age. So she begins to think that Michael is put back in her life for a reason. And maybe that reason is because they're meant to be together. And so her and Jack aren't meant to be together because he's so much younger. And she's like, younger guys, they don't want children. They don't think about that kind of thing. Which may or may not be true. I think, you know, there's, I have a good friend who got married at like 18, 19, and they're still married. Um, and that was years and years, years ago. But I think he's also the exception. I think most young people in general, they're not thinking about starting a family and having children. They're, they're not. Um, but you know, as a young movie star and you know, he's doing all this, I kind of, if there's also a, per, a perspective of will children work with your lifestyle, you know, if you're flying around all the time, you're traveling all the time, going to premieres and, you know, working. Sometimes it, it can be really hard to do that with children. Um, but she starts thinking that Michael is meant to be in her life. So she ends up breaking up with Jack on the night of his movie premiere. Um, she sees his ex-girlfriend talking to him and she realizes that this ex-girlfriend is a lot younger than she is and she thinks she's prettier and all of this stuff. I think we can all relate to that feeling that way. And she starts to basically drink to kind of get over it. And um, she drinks enough, she goes in the bathroom, she looks at herself in the mirror and she's just like appalled by what she sees. And she's like, why is he with me? Kind of a thing. And um, there's this hilarious moment where, cause she, Grace loves candy, right? She loves sweets. And um, in the movie premiere, they had some Tootsie Rolls. And apparently one had gotten on her seat and she had sat down and she was wearing a champagne cream color dress. And she was in the bathroom looking at herself, you know, almost completely drunk. And this ex-girlfriend comes in and, and she like points out, she's like, it looks like you sat in something. And she looks down and there's like a Tootsie Roll on her butt. And it looks like what it looks like. And she's just like, that's just the, the cherry on top to everything. And she ends up breaking up with him. And they go through that. And um, she almost gets with Michael, but then doesn't. She realizes how much she loves Jack. Of course she does. And um, then they kind of reconcile and um, they, they improve their relationship. I feel like it's a very realistic point of view. Um, I think not all of us can relate, again, to having the money to fly to each coast to, to visit your significant other. I think that's kind of a luxury, you know, when you're in a uh, long distance relationship. Um, it can be, you know. Um, but I feel like it's, it's the, the feelings that there's talked about that she goes through and that he goes through like it's all very realist real to me like it's stuff that I feel like I would actually feel you know in that situation or I have felt in that situation and um you really get invested in these characters and you really start to feel how they're feeling and the author does a very very good job about detailing what's happening like from a third party perspective but then also kind of giving you glimpses as to where the character is and like what they're where their mind's at, you know, what's going on in their head. And I think that's, it just, it makes you care about these characters and it invests you. And it's very, very, very well written. This series is so, I, will, I hope this gets turned into a movie. And if it has already, I'm going to have to figure that out. I'm going to have to find it and watch it. But um, I really loved this book. It's, it is a romance novel. Um, so know that and, you know, I don't know. I don't know what else to say about it. It is pretty spicy. There's a lot of, of sexy stuff in this book. I don't know if I would, well, yeah, more than the last one probably, or about the same. Um, they have a lot of little adventures together and, you know, newts discover new things about each other and they do delve deeper into their relationship. And so it's, it's quite the book. Really, really like it. I'm going to go ahead and give it, um, I'm going to give this one four out of five stars. Really, really liked this one. I think I gave the first one five out of five stars. I still really like this one. I don't know. I feel like, I feel like the first one was really good because, you know, you have that anticipation of building up, like, will they or won't they or will they or won't they? And this one, you're kind of like, mm, yeah, but they will. You know, you ever watch, like, a romance movie and you're just like, you know who the hero and heroine are straight off the bat and you're just like, yeah, they're going to end up together. It doesn't matter what happens. They're going to end up together. Like, that's just, that's a typical romance movie or a novel. So, but I'm going to go ahead and give this book a four out of five stars. Let me know if you have read this book, um, if you've read any of this series or anything else by Alice Clayton. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. 
Don't forget to go follow me over on the Instagram. Like this video if you like this video. Subscribe if you haven't already. Ring that bell icon to get notified whenever I upload a new video because you never know what kind of content is going to pop up over here on this channel. I thank you all so, so much for watching. I love you all very, very much, and I will see you in the next one. Bye!